Uh, Larry is in for dibs, and you know, Larry, they're not saying boo. They're saying loon. That's what they're saying. Yep. Um, because this guy, listen, it's playoff time, and let's not forget, Andrew Wiggins gets so much credit for sort of almost becoming just the best version of himself. I remember it as in that Dallas series last year. Right. You forget who really became the best version of himself and owned the first few games of that series. And it was the guy who joins us right now, Kavon Looney, uh, joining us on 95.7 The Game as we get ready for playoff basketball this weekend. Hey, Kavon, what's cooking, man? How are you guys doing? Uh, we're doing fantastic, man. Can you uh, harken back to that series last year against Dallas and, and and sort of remember what what it was that it, because and, and maybe do you even agree with that? Did you find sort of the best version of of yourself and and what led to that? Uh, definitely. You know, uh, last year versus the Mavericks, you know, I was kind of getting real comfortable taking what the defense uh, gave me and uh, ended up having some some good games, some big games when I, when our team needed it. So, uh, you know. Part of our team being good is you know, every guy stepping up when they're called upon. I feel like that series was it was called on me to, to step up and make plays. They you know, wanted me to make plays in the pocket, and I was able to do it and, and score and, and rebound. So uh, that's that's make our team special, and I stepped up at the right time. We're fired up to see this thing come Saturday. Um, take the fans behind the scenes, Kavon. If you're playing Sacramento on just a random night in the NBA regular season, What's your preparation look like as far as looking at Sabonis or what they're doing as opposed to a playoff series? How how is your preparation different? Uh, the preparation is totally different. You know, uh, it was a regular season game. You know, uh, probably just watch film before the game. Uh, I talk with my coach. I work out with every day, probably during pregame about what what they're going to do, what to look out for, uh, and then just go out there and play. But for playoffs, we've been prepping all week. I'm uh, watching a lot more film, uh, watching all the games that we played against them earlier in the, in the year and doing different things like that. So the preparation is a, a lot more, a lot more intense, uh, a lot more details. And, uh, you know, you really start to understand the ins and outs of their offense and their defense. Okay, the preparation for the Kings. Let's dive into this, Kavon. We had a caller on our radio station earlier today that said the Golden State Warriors have no answer for DeMontis Sabonis. How would you react to that? Uh, I mean, I'd have heard this uh, in a lot of series where there's a lot of great big men. Uh, I take pride to be able to defend my position and, uh, you know, protect the paint. Uh, you know, I feel like we got, you know, me and Draymond and Michael have been doing this all year, playing against a lot of good bigs, and we always usually hold down the fort. You know, uh, Sabonis provides a, a, a problem, but I think we got the, you know, got the answers and uh, you got to go out there and execute. You know, if we execute the game plan, I think we'd be in a, in a great position. And, you know, I'm looking forward to this battle. It's going to be a lot of fun. You know, Sabonis is a hell of a rebounder. Uh, he's a hell of a distributor as well. Um, but to me, the one thing that it stands out is the strength uh, of Sabonis. I mean, what's it like playing against him? What do you view his strengths as? Uh, you just you just nailed all of them. You know, he's a great he's a great passer, he's a great rebounder. Uh, he has he has a great touch around the room. Uh, he's one of the one of the stronger big men in the league too. So he's, he's real physical. You got to match his physicality and. Uh, you know, he now he added another layer this year. He's been pushing the ball and transitioning a lot more and doing different things like that. So uh, that's probably his biggest strength. And, uh, you know, he's been causing a problem for a lot of guys throughout the whole year. And I'm um, interested for this matchup. I'm excited for it. And then, uh, I think me and Draymond provide, uh, you know, different looks for him. And we can switch it up. And, uh, and I think it's going to be a, a fun series. Kevon Looney with us here. Uh, Willard and Larry Kruger, 95-7 the game. Uh, Kevon, how's Wiggins looking practice? He's been looking really good. You know, uh, he looks like himself. He looks like he hasn't missed a step or missed, like, like he's been here the whole time. So I'm um, excited he got there and go to war with him out there on the court. Uh, I know our team missed him, our fans missed him, so it's going to be exciting for him to step out there in, in the playoffs. You know, you you learn things, I'm sure, every day playing this game. Uh, you played in a lot of playoff series. Think back to when it was all new. What do you What do you know today that you didn't know then? That you you said you know what the experience and the experience alone really really gave me that information. Uh, I would just say just about the momentum of uh, how it could, how it could change so fast in, in a series, and just about uh, how each game is totally different. You know, you know, we, early when I first started playing the playoffs, you win the first game, you think the second game gonna be just like that, but every game is different. Every game feels totally different. The adversity. 
uh, swings and <laughs> from quarter to quarter. And it's just so, it's just so much fun. That's all we love. I love the playoffs. Every game matter. Every possession matters. So I think that's what I learned, uh, now that, uh, you know, when I first came in, I didn't think, I'm thinking the regular season and the playoffs is going to be kind of the same thing, but it's a totally different style of basketball. Uh, Kavon, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but if memory serves, uh, did you play 82 games again this year? <laughs> I did. I did. Okay. Uh, I, and I feel like we've had this conversation before, but, but what, what is your perspective? on what's happening around the league where it seems like some guys need an invitation to actually go out and play their own games? Right. Uh, I think I think, uh, I think, think the players get a bad rap for that. I, I think the players actually want to play. Uh, but when you got, you know, some of the, sometimes the training staff and, uh, you know, the front office people give you a, they give you a great speech on why you shouldn't sometimes. And it's like, man, I guess I shouldn't play, uh, so that's, I think we get a bad rap for that. I think guys really want to play. You know, the times they don't play is because they hurt. Uh, but a lot of times the guys are resting is because, you know, they tell you how to see, see the bigger picture and it's about winning. And, and when somebody tell you that's kind of hard to tell them, oh, I'm going to just forget what you're saying. So that's what I think about it. There's so many great offensive players on this team, but man, I think GP2 is one of the great defensive players I've seen. And I've been watching basketball for decades. You've watched him, and you guys got him back this year. And man, the impact he's had on your on on that end of the floor has been absolutely huge. What what do you look at as his contribution thus far, and how has he been able to kind of reacclimate with what you guys are doing so quickly? Uh, he's he's a special defender. Uh, like he's, he's just a special player. I think even more than just the defense, his energy and vibe around the locker room has been great. You know, uh, you know we didn't talk about how. Big of a present he's, he's, he is in the locker room. He's, he's always a guy that's always happy. He's bringing that that warrior energy every time he gets out there on the court. He's excited. He's diving on the floor. He's making the hustle plays. And I think our team missed that uh, throughout the early in the year, uh, especially when things were, were rocky. And I think having him back, bringing that that positive energy every night. He's a guy that you know, he's a little bit older, and you know, Steph can talk to him. Draymond can talk to him. Everybody trusts him. Uh, I think that's probably the biggest piece besides his, his energy on, on the defensive end. And uh, I think he's going to make a you know be a special. You know, player for us in his playoff run. Uh, you know, he's one of those guys you can just put on anybody. He's gonna he's gonna make make things happen. So uh, he's a huge for our locker room and, and for us on the court. I think he's gonna be a uh, play a huge role if we're gonna make it far. Come on, Looney, with us. Come on. An extension of the question about the eighty-two games is: I think you could make the case that uh, that that you are the or certainly one of the most important Warriors to keep healthy because of yeah. of where you play. And 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 the fact that they're right, you don't have a whole lot of depth there. Is is that on your mind? And and how do you go about playing all the games, but also prioritizing health? Uh, when I'm on the court, I, I don't think about it. But off the court, I definitely think about just you know doing everything uh, the right way to stay healthy. Uh, you know, not skipping or skipping steps in my process uh, in my in my you no know, uh, weight room my warm up different things like that, make sure I'm all the way locked in and focused. Uh, just because it's just something I know uh, dealing with injuries in the past that i got to take really serious. But, uh, you know, the way our, our team works, and I know I, I know I need to be out there to rebound, and uh, we don't have a lot of bigs, but the bigs we do have uh, make you know, play huge roles. So, you know, I don't think about it when I'm on the court, but off the court, I definitely make sure I take the extra steps to make sure I'm, I'm able to get there on the court, especially this time of year because, uh, you know, we, uh, our margin for error isn't, you know, is it crazy like how it used to be probably four or five years ago? Everybody, we need everybody to get out there and win. We need everybody to be healthy. So uh, I think we all think about it. Let's talk Draymond for a second. I mean, watching him from afar, Kavan, I mean, he is just ferocious out there. I mean, he's just, you can feel his will coming through the TV if you're watching the game on the tube. Um, what's it like? I mean, he gets, uh, he, he walks right to that edge and he, you can feel that will and he's ferocious out there. Um, what does that feel like to be a teammate of his when he is dialed up at full throttle? Uh, it's it's fun to watch and it's fun to be around. Uh, when a guy can bring that much intensity and uh, he you know he, he tiptoes the line and he's right there on that edge and he can uh, you know he intimidates other other teams and he brings our level of play up, our level of physicality up, and it's so exciting to see when he he takes it to that level. And everybody follows. There's nothing. He don't have to say anything. He don't got to give no loud speech. But when he goes out there and plays at that level, it just seems like Steph, Clay, Wiggs, everybody just follows his lead, and we take our defense and our, our game to a whole other level. So 
know, it's been amazing to watch. And, uh, you know, some days, uh, you know, I'll be feeling tired. I feel like I don't got a lot of energy, but I see him going out there with that level of intensity, you know, and it just makes me uh, take my game to another level. So he's been a great leader for us for this whole run. Come on, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna take a leap here. Just sort of reading uh, the the I, I don't I don't even know if it was a snicker, but the, the 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 reaction you had when I asked you about what that caller said about Sabonis, I can tell you guys right the competitive juices are starting to flow, and this Sacramento Bay Area thing has got a lot of people chirping, and I I, I wonder are, are you guys kind of uh, sequestered from that, or or are you experiencing it a little bit? What what is what is the build up like for you in this series? Uh, right now, I haven't been hearing a lot of noise. Just really been locked in and focused on you know the game plan and what's going on. But when you get there on the court and you get the fans going and people get to talking, you know it's going to go to another level. Uh, you know, right now we're really just focused on the game plan, but we know how the crowd is going to be. Uh, you know, home and away, and uh, we we live for that. And, you know, we got a lot of guys that you know they're probably hearing everything. They're not talking about it, but I know their guys are hearing everything. They're seeing everything. That's just what Steph, Draymond, and Clay do. <laughs> they hear all the noise. Uh, but right now, I'm just been trying to lock in and block it out. But once it starts going on the court, you try to try to embrace it. And uh, you know, what you if you do hear, you do see. You just kind of put that chip on your shoulder and, and try to take the game to another level. Sacramento's young, they're talented, but they're young, and they don't have a lot of playoff experience. Draymond kind of hit on it. He thinks, man, the beginning of this series is crucial, that you guys snuff them out early and not give them that belief. Do you, do you concur with that? Do you agree that that uh, Game 1 is maybe more important in this series than maybe in some past series? Uh, Definitely. I always feel like the first couple of games are important just to establish uh, you no know, dominance and just establish that uh, – how the series is going to go. You want to get the momentum first. Uh, that's something I learned from Draymond. I learned from Steph how important these games, these early games are, just to set the tone of how the series is going to be. So I think Draymond hit it right on the head. Uh, you know, we want to you know we got a young team like that who has not, don't have a lot of experience. You know, they get the crowd involved. They get the you know, playing their style of play, and it's kind of hard to stop. And especially they got one. They say they got the best offense ever. So when we got a team flowing like that, uh, it's hard to stop. So we want to you know get ahead of that. You know, set our set the tone that we're going to be physical, that we're going to be here, and that uh, we're going to take things away. We're going to do that early. Okay, Kavon, did I just hear you say a little bit ago that Steph, Clay, and Dre hear everything, and we know they do. They call themselves the Petty Kings. <laughs> so wait, like, but and are, and are you not like that? Like, who on the team hears everything and who doesn't? I feel like them three are. They hear everything. I don't think everybody else. If they do hear, it, they don't talk about it as much. But I know Steph, Clay. And Draymond, they hear everything. I, I know you won't think they do, but then they do a press conference and they talk about something from six months ago. I don't, mean, I, don't, I don't know how they even saw that, but those three are, are definitely the Petty Kings. And then you got Andre in the, in the background who's egging it on. Okay, but then I also just heard you uh, put in something about how Sacramento's quote unquote the best offense of all time. So, I mean, you, you heard something this week, right? I definitely heard a little bit, but you know, that's how things go. Uh, we know that you no, know, they give us all the numbers. You know, our, you know, our athletic team. They come out good. Their offense is. So we've been watching film on them all weekend. We know how special their offense can be. So, you know, as a defender, you got to want to. You want to slow that down. You want to be the. You know, be the team that. You know, put that to the heart. All right, take us into Saturday. You, you're going to go up to the Golden One Center. You're going to walk into that Warrior locker room. It's going to be a number of hours before the game. What are you looking for? What What is success to you? Does that mean guys are, are vibing, listening to music, talking, having a good time? Is it quiet? Is it intense? Are guys looking at their, their scouting reports? Paint the picture uh, for the fans who don't get a chance to go in there. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's, it's usually a little bit of both. That's what you want. You want guys to be super locked in and, and super dialed in and focused, but you want it to be, be loose. You don't want it to be too tense where you're going out there, you're too tight, you're not playing your game. So it's going to be... Uh, you know, real locked in. Everybody's going to know the scout important. Everybody's going to be focused, but it's going to be a little bit of joking, a little bit of kidding around, just to just keep the light, the mood light. Because you all know, that's what our team is. We want to play with joy. We want to be, uh, you know, we play loose but fast and, and discipline. That's always been the motto of our team. And uh, if we can achieve that in the, in the pregame, uh, I think it'd be good for for the game. Okay, come on. I'm going to I'm going to ask you a question you've probably never been asked, but just trust me. There's a reason I'm asking this. How how do you think you would do at our job? Oh, man, I don't think I would do that good at you guys' job. <laughs> I'm not I'm not a uh, 
part of the new media yet, so I don't think I'll do that. <laughs> I don't know if we're part of the new media either, but <laughs> but here's the reason I'm asking. Your head coach is going to be on with us in a little bit over an hour and a half, and I would like you to ask the first question. What question <laughs> would you like to ask Steve Kerr? Oh, man, my question I would ask Steve, oh, man. Uh... I would ask him what's his favorite Barbosa story since Barbosa is on the <laughs> on the Kings uh, coaches that. That was my first question. There okay, you go. there it is. We're starting it. We're starting that conversation with your question. We're going to go for a Barbosa story. All right. All right. Um, hey, come on. You're always a ton of fun, man. Thank you so much for making some time for us today. All right. Thank you. All Thanks, right. Kavon. There he goes. That's Kavon Looney.